Hello, everybody. Hello. Uh, hello. Hi. And welcome to another scintillating episode of the show where two grown men eat chocolate <laughs> and talk about it on camera. Brian? Yeah, it's it's like big boys eating candy. <laughs> yes, it is. I often t- I tell people, if you would have told me when I was in third or fourth grade that someday I'd be eating chocolate on camera with my brother, I, yeah. I'd say things turned out better than I thought. That's right. Actually, that's, yeah, yeah that's it's right. not bad. Not There's bad. been times in my life when I've been having an experience and I thought, how did I get here in the negative way? But this is one of those where I'm like, how did I get here, but in the positive way? I like, mean, we're, we're in our office. It's not bad. We're here together. That's right. We got a nice flower picture on the wall. We're I eating mean, chocolate. Yeah. Yeah, it's a good deal. A couple bros hanging out, having an having a episode of a show. Why not? You got it. So you're here on the Chocolate Bros Chocolate Review Show. You are. We are the owners of Fortunato Chocolate. You mm-hmm. can check us out at www.fortunatochocolate.com. We've owned a chocolate business for 16 years. Brian lived in... Brett's Brian. Hi, I'm I'm Brian. He's Adam. Adam. Brian lived in the jungle of northern Peru for 10 years, running a cacao uh, bean buying and processing operation for our company, and we continue to buy a rare variety of cacao in the jungle of northern Peru. That's correct. Brian, why don't you you say some stuff? I'm doing all the talking. All right. Well, I'd just like to say that uh, our company, Fortunato Chocolate, can be found online at www.fortunatochocolate.com. We have a retail store, two retail stores in Issaquah, Washington, just east of Seattle, if you're ever up in the northwest. We'd love for you to come by Saturday mornings. You can find uh, Adam and I working an owner's shift in the store. We will personally serve you some soft serve or or ring you up. We'll chat. There's banter. It's a lot of fun in there. So come on by. And also, if you're watching the video, I just want to say thank you. Thank you. If you're buying the chocolate online at fortunatochocolate.com, if you come by the store, even if you're just watching this, you could hit, hit like, subscribe, thumbs up, anything like that. We just appreciate it. We just appreciate your eyes on this. Thank you. We do. And the purpose of this show, uh, there's two reasons that we do this show. Mm-hmm. The first is with summer coming, we're trying to just do a public service here and help anybody who might be watching. Find a good bar of chocolate that's affordable that you might be able to find in your local grocery store or wherever you procure your chocolate. Mm -hmm. And the second thing is just to make sure that we're staying up on what's going on in the market and not having too much tunnel vision because we only eat our own chocolate. It's like you said, it's a public service. It's a public service. Some people uh, drive an ambulance. There's EMS. Some people are first responders. Mm -hmm. They go do rescue for when people fall down a cliff in their car. We eat chocolate. We eat chocolate. That's how we serve the public. I got a a neighbor up the street from my house Mm -hmm. who trains seeing eye dogs. Yeah. So that's good. That's noble. It's all right. That's a no, that's it's, a noble undertaking. It's no presenting chocolate reviews to the to the public over the interwebs, yeah. but it's not bad. It's not. It, hey, he's doing what he can. That's right. Right. He's doing what he can. Not, not everybody's got the refined palate that we have here. <laughs> and we're doing what we can. <laughs> yeah. And what we can today do is review this bar, which is an equal exchange, fairly traded, organic dark chocolate, sixty-seven percent cacao, mint crunch. And uh, you, you, so. This equal, ex- I got, I picked up the equal exchange bar because I see these equal exchange, I see this brand mm-hmm. in a lot of places, and I have never bought an equal exchange bar before. Right, it's such a, it's a, it's a, it's not really a, an attractive name from a marketing it perspective. Doesn't, it doesn't say anything. It's really. not evocative. Yeah. But what they're trying to evoke is the fact that they're giving an equal chance to the farmers, and I just want to give a little bit of the text on the back so people can understand. Their whole take is join us in changing the food system, and it says learn more inside. We'll open it. With your support, Equal Exchange is building an alternative trade system that puts power back in the hands of small farmers, workers, and chocolate lovers like you. Now, what there, this is, uh, and it shows a picture of a farmer, and in the, on that picture of a farmer, it says Acopagro. Now, Acopagro is a great, big, enormous um, farmers cooperative, cacao growers cooperative in northern Peru. I'm sorry, I should say northeastern Peru. It's near Tarapoto in the jungle uh, part of San Martin, Peru. And there are about five or six really, really big farmers cooperatives out there in San Martin, Acopagro, uh, Oro Verde, Sol de Oro, uh, things like that. And they specialize in uh, production of a type of cacao called CCN51, which is a high yield, low flavor, hybrid variety that is disease resistant that uh, essentially the U.S. and Peruvian governments have been seeding throughout the San Martin region for for many, many years to try to stem the growth of coca or cocaine production. And there are many farmers out there. Acopagro, like all the big five or six uh, um, groups, is direct trade or fair trade. Fair trade. And what they're talking about is fair trade certification. They're changing the food system by offering fair trade additional wages to farmers. Now, we could do a whole show, and we may have before, on fair trade. I have my thoughts over whether it accomplishes the goal of actually putting more income in farmers' pockets. 
I will say that it's probably better than not caring. Yeah. And they're, the, the, the angle that they're taking here and the fact that they have a picture of an actual farmer on the bar, that's a good thing. It, Let's I, just start with that. I completely agree. I will only chime in mm -hmm. with, with this thought because it mentions the food system. Mm -hmm. By just inherently because I bought this at the grocery store, mm -hmm. it is a part of the regular food system. And about how much do you think you paid for this? I think I paid I think I paid four ninety nine. Okay, so or five, maybe maybe five ninety nine. Five ninety nine for a two point eight ounce. Yeah. And let me just quickly say this. Mm -hmm. It's in the book. I don't want to brag. I'm a published author. I, I wrote a book. Anyways, that's beside the point. <laughs> in the book, <laughs> in in the in the in the in the book that I wrote, my book mm -hmm. that's published. Oh, well, will be published soon. It's coming out soon. Um, Don't jump the gun, Adam. Yeah, yeah. yeah I hope. I hope. <laughs> hopefully, they're not going to see this video and get called up. So this guy, you know what? This guy's kind of a, kind of obnoxious. Um, anything that goes into the grocery store. Just in the United States, because mm -hmm. we saw we, we saw in the back here that this is actually manufactured in Switzerland. Right. Right. These are bulk CCN 51 beans from San Martin. In Peru. In Peru. They are sent to Switzerland and produced in a large industrial factory, probably by Nestle. Yeah. And then shipped to the U.S. and distributed through a... Uh, so here's how it will go, right? Mm -hmm. So there will be an international commodities broker mm -hmm. who buys this from the co-op in Peru. Mm -hmm. And then they will sell it to Nestle, who mm -hmm. will then make the chocolate. And then Nestle will package it and sell it to Equal Exchange. Mm -hmm. Equal Exchange will sell it to an international distributor. Mm -hmm. The international distributor will sell it to a domestic distributor. The domestic distributor will sell it to the grocery store. And the retailer sells and it to And then the, the retailer consumer. sells it to you. That is the very traditional that food is, system. Anytime you sell a bar yeah. of chocolate in a grocery store, mm -hmm. it more or less goes through that system. So it's good that they're doing the fair trade thing. It's good that they're conscientious, like you said. Mm -hmm. But just by the very fact that it's not being sold directly to customers means that you're not actually reforming right. any... Right, and by the way... And I'm, I'm, I'm focusing on the there's word There's a chain. lot of information here. We may have some of those details wrong. There's a lot yeah, of information yeah. in yeah. here. So anybody who's interested in seeing if Equal Exchange, in your opinion, is really trying to change the food system should pick up a bar and look at what they have on the inside um, and, make, and make yeah. your own judgment. Agreed. So Agreed. Let, let's talk about the And chocolate. by the way, I like, I like the packaging. Yeah, the packaging like on that. the outside has an eye-catching color. It's got a lot of information, but uh -huh. it's presented well. And on the inside, there's a lot more information, which you may or may not choose and, and to in, take and advantage of. In particular, of. I like this little envelope. Yeah, so it's I got don't a little, it's not you can't reseal it, no. but it's a better than the thin metal one because foil, it, yeah. it's at least more manageable. Yep. So the chocolate is nice and thin, comes molded in a very simple, very simple mold. And now we're gonna take a little snifferoo. I pick up the mint. I got the mint. I got chocolate and mint. I yep. like my first sense is I like the smell. Yeah. Oh, and I by like the way, the we didn't we didn't uh, uh, say the ingredient. It has Go a ahead. real good ingredients list. It's just organic chocolate liquor, uh, ground up cocoa beans, organic cane sugar, organic cocoa butter, and peppermint 10% peppermint crisps which are made of organic sugar, organic peppermint oil, um, unrefined whole cane sugar and ground vanilla beans. Everything organic and no filler, no No, nothing. no, and we're we're familiar with the proper ingredients for a mint-based product because we make we make mm -hmm. mint patties, so we know what it takes to make something taste good and minty. Mm -hmm. So now I'm trying it. Mm -hmm. hmm. Sixty-seven percent cacao. Go ahead. So. I'll just say right off the top, mm -hmm. I, I like this bar of chocolate. I'm a fan of this bar of chocolate, but let me ex let me just go ahead and explain mm -hmm. what it is that I that I like about it. So, straight off the top, you mentioned it was made with CCN 51. Mm -hmm. This is not this is not a, a a nuanced, layered, highly flavor highly flavorful. The chocolate itself. Chocolate, correct. It's not. That's right. The chocolate is is here. It's sort of a like a mild delivery it's, system. It's an inoffensive delivery system. It's a mild. There's a lot of cocoa butter, a little more than I'd like. That, but, but that's okay because mm -hmm. it's not. A, this isn't even you're, like you're not buying this to get a great piece of chocolate. Right. Right. This is a a decent delivery mm -hmm. system for the mint crunch, and I, I hadn't really noticed it, but this says mint crunch. 
And so they've... It's not... Yeah, they didn't they, just put mint oil in here. They've yeah, actually made a little bit yeah, of crunchy yeah. mint. Yeah, and as a result, mm -hmm. the chocolate has something like a stone ground mm -hmm. texture. It's not like a smooth... Which is interesting because it's made in Switzerland. Mm -hmm. But this is not like oh. a smooth... Look what it says. Peppermint-infused sugar crystals. Uh-huh. So it's okay. sugar crystals with mint in it. Mm -hmm. um, right off the top, I get... Good. I get good mint flavor. Yes. I like the text. I like the texture mm -hmm. of the of the mint crystals. Mm -hmm. There's not much in the way of like a real strong chocolate flavor. No. But it also is not offensive, except for as the mouthfeel is lingering mm -hmm. on, I am getting some some unpleasant bitterness. Mm -hmm. um, you know, at 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 the tail end. Um, but the 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 it's and it's not it's, and it's not over sweet. So mm -hmm. the combination of sort of a more or less flavorless chocolate mm -hmm. as a delivery system for the crystal for the mint the texture of the crystals mm -hmm. it's not over the top sweet mm -hmm. if i was jonesing for mint and dark chocolate and i couldn't get our mint patties right i could rock with this because I, yeah. I like mint i like mint and chocolate so right off the bat yeah the aroma is good you, you pick up the mint mm -hmm. this is a great example of how to take an otherwise bland and not that valuable chocolate and incorporate an inclusion They've balanced it well. Mm -hmm. The distribution of the inclusion through the bar is quite good. The inclusion greatly enhances both the flavor and texture of what would otherwise be an unremarkable or even kind of yeah. on the far low end. Uh -huh. of, so I think this is a really good example of how 10% of an inclusion, mm -hmm. sugar and peppermint, can actually enhance the value and, and eatability of a bar really, really nicely. You're right, this isn't bad. The chocolate on its own is unremarkable, but this is a case of one plus one is more than two. And we saw this with the, with one of the lint bars that we created. That's right. That, or that we that we didn't create, that we that we reviewed. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's worth it to try to do your best on the inclusion. The inc yes. It's worth it because the inclusion, if it's well done, not like over the top sweet, mm -hmm. it, it delivers on what you think you're getting, yes. which is mint crunch, yes. right? That's the theme of the bar. Mm -hmm. It delivers on what you think you're getting. Yeah. The inclusion can bring up the entire experience That's right. of the chocolate bar if it's well done. And it, when you have a chocolate like this, which is very basic and otherwise unremarkable, even to say I probably wouldn't eat just this chocolate. I w if it was just that chocolate, I, mean, it I would, could. It's not, it, it's not terrible, but I just wouldn't waste my time because mm -hmm. there's better options. Yeah. But this is a way that an inclusion can elevate something mundane to something pretty good. And if all these ingredients listed say organic and probably some more than just the cacao yeah. maybe fair trade or fair trade if they're fair trade and they gave a tip of the, and they gave a tip of the cap to the cacao farmers there's an actual farmer and his name is on there Javier Flores Garcia if they're doing what they can to improve the value chain for farmers and paying direct trade premiums and putting out a product that I think is thoughtfully produced I'm going to go ahead and give this one a thumbs up I, would, I think they did a good job if if I was in a place mm -hmm. and I was and I I had a hankering for a mint, like a mint chocolate. Because mm -hmm. do you like mint and chocolate? I in do. General? I love mint chocolate. I like mint chocolate. So if I was in a place and I was hankering for a mint and chocolate, mm -hmm. and that was calling my attention, I would absolutely yes. pick, pick up this bar. Mm -hmm. But for our reputation, mm -hmm. the reputation that we have with the people, again, I just want to reiterate, this is not a knock your socks off great chocolate. No, it's not but, but the elevated experience. No, but the overall experience mm -hmm. is worth it, and it's a, and it's a good value, and I, I don't think you would be disappointed yeah. if you bought this bar and, and took it took it with you. I'll go out and say this. I like our mint and dark chocolate confection quite a bit better than this because I think the chocolate well, and the mint have a different interplay, and the chocolate's a lot better. Yeah, and, and this one, as it lingers on... Yes. So if you were to just grab... The to get problem your, with high cocoa butter bars is that what lingers is the off taste of the cocoa butter. And it might not be cocoa butter. It's industrial cocoa butter. It's industrial cocoa butter. I'm not so, sure if it was fully deodorized. And so what you're getting, cocoa butter, industrial cocoa butter, is pressed from the funkiest beans. So if the, what lingers, unfortunately, there's a lot of cocoa butter in this... What lingers is the taste of the cocoa butter. I wish the peppermint was lingering. Correct. This is a that's 10, that's correct. This is ten percent um, uh, peppermint mint crunch and ninety yeah. percent. Uh, it says only ten percent. I suspect that I would like this even better if it was about twelve percent inclusion. Because part of the reason you sometimes go for a mint flavored confection yes. is you want the freshness. Mm -hmm. You kind of want that the, the freshness of yes. the mint to linger. Mm -hmm. But in this case, if you were to gra if you were to pick up this bar and just like mash it, you know you're hungry. Yeah. You want to eat some chocolate and you start mashing down on mm -hmm. it. 
at the end, you're gonna be in for a little bit of a, a yeah. downer. The end is the drop because, off. Yeah, because because the mouth. But the aroma is the, solid. The, mouth at the, end is the aroma is solid. The taste is solid. The tail's not great. Overall, for what it is, mm -hmm. even though the tail's not excellent, I'm still giving it a. It's a it's up. a good deal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You 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 won't be over. You won't be. You won't, you won't be, be bummed blown out. away and you won't be bummed you out. You won't be bummed out. So mm -hmm. there you go. Equal exchange. That's the 67% mint crunch bar. Anything you want to add before we sign off, Brian? Uh, thank you very much for thank watching. You very much. Mash like, subscribe, thumbs up, anything like that. Go to fortunatochocolate.com, come by the store, and we really appreciate What's, you hey, watching. Wasn't, wasn't there a famous guy who said, like, thank you, thank you very much? Is that Elvis? Thank you, thank you very much. He's a <laughs> master of the, well, thank you. of the voice imitations and accents. Thank you very much. Give us an Irish accent before we sign off. <laughs> My brogue is lacking. <laughs> that's, that's Scottish for sure. <laughs> All right. Thank you, everybody. Have a good one.